The speech is entitled, Aren't We the Same? Let me begin by reading two quotations. First, as for intellect, all I can say is, if a woman has a pint and a man a quart, why can't she have her little pint full? You need not be afraid to give us our rights for fear we will take too much, for we can't take more than our pint will hold. Second, animated with hope, nay, with an assurance of the triumph of liberty and goodwill to man, I will lift up my voice like a trumpet and show this people their transgression, their sins of omission towards the slave, and what they can do towards affecting Southern mind and overthrowing Southern slavery and Southern oppression. These were the words of Sojourner Truth during her speech, Ain't I a Woman, and of Angelina Grimke during her final address at Philadelphia Hall, respectively. Were the physical acts of these two women engaging with their audience, speaking with eloquence, and shedding light on the two great social equality movements of antebellum America, abolitionism and women's rights, not enough evidence for American men in the 19th century of not just the capabilities of women, but their worth. We, the people of this democratic nation, should feel thankful for the work of Ms. Truth and Ms. Grimke, two courageous, intelligent, and caring individuals. One of them, an emancipated slave, advocated not just equal treatment and rights for blacks, but for women in general. The other, a white Southern former slaveholder, advocated not just equal treatments and rights for women, but for all blacks too. They took on the fight to improve the lives of not just their kind, but of others as well, thereby showing a woman's real potential. Amidst oppression and opposition, these two rose above, acted as a voice for women and blacks, and challenged the status quo matching the work of their male counterparts such as Frederick Douglass and William Lloyd Garrison. Objectively, the plight of enslaved blacks seemed much more severe than that of women. But that begs the question, why should severity matter with regards to discrimination? Different forms of discrimination may vary in brutality, but all are equally serious problems. Was it more acceptable to limit and remove only some agency from a group of people based on the fact that they were women than it was to completely limit and take away all agency from another group because they were black? Was the slave of a more forgiving master happier than the slave who nearly every day felt the lashes of the whip and trembled as the hot, thick blood would run down her back and lived with constant fear and anxiety that the unforgettable pain and anguish would soon return once again? I don't believe there was such thing as a happy slave in antebellum America regardless of whether or not the owner was one who showed no mercy with punishments, was one who refrained from using the whip, or was one who, while at the same time being a master, was also a husband and a lover. If you think all slaves in America were black, think again. American slaves were not only those working in the cotton fields. White women living at home in both the North and the South were slaves to their husbands. They were objects told how to live their lives as passive, submissive bystanders whose sphere of influence was limited to the home. Piety, purity, submissiveness, and domesticity. Were these the characteristics of the perfect woman who had reached her potential? A full potential that excluded the right to speak to promiscuous audiences, the right to vote, and the right to an equal footing with her husband? Were these all a woman had to offer? Why were the same standards not expected of men? What gave men the right to curse, to beat, to rape, and to disregard the feelings and interests of the woman he considered his wife and his lover? Are men better? Impossible. Who could be better, more daring, and more admirable than Sojourner Truth, a former slave whose powerful words stilled crowds like rolling thunder, or Angelina Grimke, who left the comfort, company, and love of her slaveholding family in South Carolina to build a new sense of self and community in the North along with other abolitionists? I certainly am not. Women at home and slaves in the fields weren't all too different. Women's rights activists and abolitionists used similar reasoning as their weapons against the oppressors and advocated for similar rights and treatment for the victims of injustice. But sadly, the fight championed by these two heroes is still not yet over to this day. The voices of these women and blacks around the world still struggling for equality must be heard, understood, and accepted. It is greed, power, 
or a distorted worldview that allows for the continuation of discrimination against women and blacks, not truth and reason. One needs to only look at the lives of Truth and Grimke as examples, as proof for how women are equal to men, how all races are equal, and none better than the other. What else is there to say? On our beautiful Colgate University campus, the existence of racism and misogyny is a tragedy that undermines the power and potential of so many around us. I've heard people slander foreign Chinese students and insult homosexuals and watch men catcall women inappropriately on a disturbingly regular basis. What gives one student the right to feel superior to another? Nothing. The next time you witness racial or gender discrimination, I urge you to have the courage to speak up rather than, as Grimke said, be a silent spectator who naturally becomes callous and develops an insensibility that prepares you to apologize for or disregard such a barbarity. Will you make your voice heard? Will you act? Or will you turn a blind eye and settle for comfortable ignorance? Thank you.